Thank you, gentlemen. And it is an interesting discussion to have, which is, you know, what's going on with this TSM team right now? Because mm -hmm. a solid start to the game, but things did start to crumble there in the mid-game. We watched TDK kind of claw their way back into it. Yeah. Yeah, it I, I understand that they're, like, trying Echo and stuff like that, but using, like, we're trying and looking at uh, play further on, like international play, that only works for so long. You have to pull out these victories in a convincing manner because TSM just look really sloppy right now. Really sloppy. Yeah, and it's interesting because the slow-paced holding pattern TSM seems to be one of, if not the best in the league. Uh, right against Dignitas, they were slowly accruing leads through the landing phase and sitting around. Against TDK, same thing happens. They're slowly accruing these leads, and that's fine. What seems to happen, though, is some of these members of TSM seem to lack focus. I know people criticize Wild Turtle for it a whole lot, but it's happening to Bjergsen as well. It's happening to Santorin. People are just kind of a little bit too far up, and these teams that are running a lot of heavy engage, yesterday it was Saber, today it was Gragas and Malphite with Yasuo, teams are really tenacious, and they will willingly go for those pickoffs, and if TSM aren't ready to be in a battle that second, then it's going to be bad. Uh, if you want to expand on that a little bit further, maybe that means TSM needs a bit better vision control. Like, you can't just, like, never be on the same screen as Gragas. That's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if we look closer at the game, we can probably see, you know, what are things that TSM could really do to make sure these mistakes don't happen as much. Well, I, I feel like having your tank line in front or having somebody at least guard for them and having sure. at least a formation as some, like, at least something that even resembles a formation would be good for them. Because mm -hmm. when you have Wild Turtle looking like a frontliner, Bjergsen looking like a frontliner, and being the first people into the fight, like, Yesterday and today, Bjergsen and Wild Turtle were almost giving up the game because you saw, like, yesterday, Bjergsen running in after Wild Turtle gets caught. Wild Turtle, this game, getting caught. Bjergsen following it afterwards. He got a great four-man ulti, but the fact that these are happening and it's not just a one-time mistake is very worrisome because it's also a mistake they made versus Cloud9 first game of the season where they're being overly aggressive because Teamfight used to be their forte, right? Yeah, sure. Now it's all fallen to the wayside because of positional errors before the team fight. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and TSM, for the most part, are still team fighting rather well. Right? These guys are 4-2. and two. They're yeah. in second-ish place, right? They're in that, that second sort of tier of ties. Um, but I also want to talk about TDK, right? Like, this game was, okay, some mistakes by TSM, but good on TDK yeah. for on a different comp. The Yasuo mid, okay, it technically lost, so the science still holds up, but, like, they ran a Gragas Malphite Yasuo comp. That's really cool, and Corky, like, chills in the back line. It's good to see them trying to do other cool things. It was cool to see uh, Seraph go solo kill Dyrus. Like, he's obviously an LCS-class top laner being allowed to play his own style of champions, and it's working. You even heard Dyrus talk about Seraph at the beginning of yeah. the game, saying that this guy made it back into the LCS on his own talent and ability. He <laughs> does deserve to compete with the best. I do want to continue to hit on your point about TDK bringing out this composition because it's an interesting point of attack against mm -hmm. this TSM team that is developing a pattern of losing focus, of leaving themselves open to catch. So as we watch teams pick up Sivir against them, which was banned out this time around, the Malphite, these you know solid engaged teams, it's a, a weakness that I think TSM really needs to shore up. Yeah, and I really like the Sivir ban here because it's, uh, sorry, sorry, Sivir was banned this game? I'm going to look. Hold oh, on. never mind. I, on my you're, I take that you're back. You're feeding me false information. I, I am feeding no, you false information. Like, this wasn't I'm picked. Like, <laughs> I'm like, that sounds like a great idea. They <laughs> yeah. should ban Sivir. They should have done so yeah. Nobody picked Sivir, <laughs> so that's completely aside. Yeah. But yeah, the fact that they're, they have this weakness now that they're trying to work on, I don't know if it's going to get better by trying to cover it up with bans if they were throwing bans like that out, but being able to at least dive into it a couple times and fail is a good way to kind of shore that up because now they're going to have a bunch of replays to look at and now a lot of experience with it. We'll see what TSM can do to shore up those weaknesses. Before we head to break, we do want to make a quick clarification on the Azir and Varus interaction that happened in Game 1. So, Zyrene, I know you have some insight into that. Yeah, so the way that the physics work in League of Legends is Alistair headbutt is possible because it's a knockback into a knock up. So the momentum of the knockback is stopped by the knock up. What happened was Bishu on Azir Dives in, not Bishu, sorry. Slushi. Slushi. Yeah, Slushi on his ear dives in. His E, the knockup, actually doesn't make contact before his Emperor's Divide does. So Emperor's Divide hits, and then that knockback is canceled by the knockup of the E. So Bishu, he's honestly too good. Uh, sorry, Slushi, Slushi was honestly too good, and he was able to pull it off too quickly. So too that, good for League of Legends. Happened. Yeah, he's too good. I don't even remember his name half the time. I'm sorry, right. Slushi. Well, if that's the way the interaction plays out, at least I want to know that I'm too good for the, the physics of the game, yeah, I guess. Well, good. coming up, we've got our game of the week with Team Impulse and Team Liquid loading onto the stage for that one soon enough. Stay with us. The action continues after this.
Whoa, well, watch out, the fox. Hey, yep, 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 yep. Oh, that is not a good fox. It's <laughs> not a good fox. <laughs> Very nice equalizer actually on the team coming through. TSM still wants this. It seems like it was a bit hesitated though. Seraph making a transfuse kill here. They're getting on Darius. Yeah, ulted, the Malphite Darius. ulted me. Can we go? Can we go? Yeah, 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 Malphite, yeah, yeah. I got stun, I got stun, I got stun. Okay, okay, he flashed it, he flashed it. Oh, no, Gragas We should go, we should go. Yeah, we should chase, go. chase, chase. I'm, I'm gonna flash on Gragas. I'm gonna flash on Gragas. I have ult, I have ult. I have bubble on backline. I'm bubbling. I'm going for bubble, I'm going for bubble. We shoot, we shoot, we shoot, we shoot, we shoot. I have ult, I have ult, I have ult. He flashed. Calista, 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 Annie, 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 can they get over the wall? Here comes the Equalizer. They lay out the red carpet for Kaz. And Bijou's going to be in the fight as well. 47 minutes in, Team Solomid takes down TDK.